In this video, we're going to look at data to analyze whether you would be better off paying off your mortgage early or investing in stocks. We'll compare all the significant factors with the biggest one being your mortgage interest rate. In the first part, we'll go through what a mortgage is and how it works. In part two, we'll look at stock market returns versus mortgage returns. And in the final part, we'll go through three powerful strategies you can use to help pay off a mortgage quicker to save thousands of dollars. By the way, if you're in a position to consider how to use extra money after paying bills, it means you're ahead of most Americans, so well done. Part 1. Understanding How Mortgages Work The four parts of a mortgage payment are the principal, interest, insurance, and taxes. To keep it simple for comparisons, we'll just look at the two major components, which are the principal and interest payments. Before deciding to pay off your mortgage early, you must know the mortgage interest rate. A higher interest rate means you'll have to pay more over the mortgage period. This rate can vary depending on the economy and your credit score. Essentially, the interest payment is what you'll pay to borrow the funds, as it's often calculated as a yearly percentage of the loan. The second major component is the principal payment, which refers to the amount borrowed from your lender, minus the amount which has already been paid. When paying your mortgage, a larger amount is usually taken from the principal in the later years. The interest rate payments are higher for the first half of your mortgage compared to the second half because you're borrowing a larger amount at the beginning. Before we look at how much you can save from paying off a mortgage early, beware that you can often expect to pay redemption penalties as lenders request this to protect their projected income. Part 2. Stock Market versus Mortgage Returns Firstly, we'll look at the average gains from the U.S. housing market and then compare it to the average returns for the S&P 500 index fund. After, we'll also consider the mortgage interest rate and other factors. We'll use the S&P 500 index fund for stock market returns because it's the most popular index fund in the U.S. for retail investors. U.S. house prices went up on average by 4.63% from 1992 till 2024. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 index has averaged 10.26 per year since adopting 500 stocks into the index in 1957 through to the end of 2023. Next, we'll look at an average mortgage in the U.S. to see how much we could save by paying off the mortgage early. The average U.S. house price in August 2024 is $416,000, and the interest rate for a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage is 6.5%. Bearing this in mind, here's a table showing the remaining balance, principal and interest payments over the 30 years. As you can see, I've included the years 1, 5, 10, 20, and 30 to get a better overall idea of how the payments look over time. The principal increases while the interest decreases as the remaining balance becomes less. There are other payments such as home insurance and property tax. However, we'll exclude them from our example to help keep it simple. Interestingly, as you can see from this chart, the principal crosses the remaining balance in mid-2046. The total interest paid is $424,468, which we'll use to compare against the stock market returns. It's quite surprising for many to see how much more you pay over the 30-year mortgage when you add in the interest payments. If we were to compare this mortgage at 6.5%, but at 3% instead, we can see how significant the savings are, as shown here. Now that we understand the main mortgage payments, we can look at the difference compared to the stock market returns. However, we must be aware that by paying off the home instead of investing in stocks, we would save money from the mortgage interest payments, which were $424,468 over 30 years, which will round off to $424,000. We now need to add $424,468 in interest payments to the home price increase. The home increased from $416,000 to $1.617 million, which is $1,201,260, which will round off to $1.2 million. So a $1.2 million home value plus the $424,000 interest savings equals $1.62 million. However, the S&P 500 returned $1,554,597, which will round off to $1.55 million from $83,000. The increase equals $1.47 million, which is slightly less than the $1.62 million from paying off the mortgage. However, we must keep in mind that the S&P 500 can accumulate dividends, which increases the average returns to 11.87% per year over the last 50 years up to 2024. 
If we take a look at the house value versus the S&P 500 at 11.87% instead, we can see that the house value was higher in year 20. However, in year 30, the S&P 500 was $784,000 ahead. Therefore, overall, we would be up $2.4 million minus the $83,000 starting out, which is a gain of $2.31 million. Next, we need to take the $2.31 million and subtract it from the $1.62 million that was used to pay off the mortgage to get $697,000. But would we really be $697,000 better off from investing in the S&P 500 versus paying off a mortgage? The real answer is that it depends, as we cannot guarantee stock market or real estate returns. Also, we have not looked up property taxes, home insurance, and capital gains tax on stocks. To help avoid stock market taxes, you can consider using a Roth IRA, which allows you to avoid paying capital gains tax on deposits up to a yearly limit. Hey, if you're finding value from the video, please click the like button because it helps. We've only looked at U.S. house price returns, so if you're living in a country where the house prices have not increased so much, you'll need to bear that in mind. What I found shocking was how huge a difference only 1.61% increase in the S&P 500 result made over 30 years. It just goes to show the power of compound interest over a long period of time. It's also important to consider the possibility of drying up your savings if you allocate too much money to paying off your mortgage, because without enough emergency funds, you may have trouble dealing with unexpected expenses. A property can easily take half a year to sell. However, you can sell your shares in stocks or the S&P 500 right away. The liquidity of stocks is another advantage. However, you have to consider that paying off a mortgage gives most people a greater feeling of security and comfort. Be aware that many mortgage lenders will charge you a fee, but they may allow you to overpay up to 10% of the total within any year without charge. It's essential to check your lender's terms and conditions regarding early payment fees. It's worth considering the fact that the 6.5% interest savings from the mortgage is both risk and tax-free, while the returns from the S&P 500 are not guaranteed. Also, historically, house prices have been less volatile than the S&P 500, therefore you're more likely to stress more while investing. Another factor to consider is your age, because as you near retirement, you'll probably want to take on less risk and see less volatility in your investments. Therefore, paying off a mortgage might make more sense. Also, it's less likely that you'll spend money from selling your home compared to spending from selling stocks. A reason for this is that you'll feel the benefits of having a physical asset that keeps a roof over you and your family more than the digits in your stock portfolio. If you're interested in finding out the three biggest mortgage mistakes, check out this video here. That being said, by investing in the stock market, you can experience the compounding effect of money. If your mortgage interest payments are 10% and the stock market return is 10%, you'll get a far greater return from the 10% in stocks because of compounding. Therefore, you must look at how long you have left on your mortgage because the longer the period, the more it makes sense to invest in stocks because of compounding returns. If you have 10 years left on your mortgage, the impact of compounding is far less compared to 30 years, so you need to run the calculations based on your situation. As a general rule of thumb, the lower the interest rate, the better it is to invest in stocks, and secondly, the longer the payment time period, the better it is to invest in stocks. Part 3. Strategies to help pay off a mortgage early The first strategy is to use bi-weekly payments, which means making half your monthly payment every two weeks instead of every month. For example, if you were to buy a house of $350,000 with a 10% deposit over 30 years with 7% interest, your payments would be as shown here. As you can see, you would pay over $100,000 less in interest payments and pay it off 7 years quicker. However, as mentioned earlier, please make sure you check with your lender about fees from paying off the mortgage sooner. The second strategy is to make a fixed additional monthly payment to pay off your mortgage. Many people set aside, for example, $1 to $500 per month to add towards their mortgage payments. For example, if we look at the same mortgage of $350,000 over 30 years with 7% interest, we will save over $70,000 in interest payments by only paying an extra $100 per month as shown here. Also, we would save over three and a half years to pay it off. Lastly, you have the possibility to use a lump sum payment to help pay off a mortgage quicker. Paying an extra $10,000 lump sum can save a little over $63,000 in two and a half years on the mortgage. There's greater peace of mind and a sense of comfort that would come from paying off a mortgage early versus investing in stocks. Secondly, you can experience a lower debt-to-income ratio which can help you borrow money. 
And lastly, you'll be able to free up more cash for other expenses. It took me a long time to research and find data for this video, so if you found value from it, please consider subscribing and clicking that like button. Also, check out more videos here. Thanks, guys.